And good afternoon, everybody. This is Michael Filigera. I am with LogicalSignals.com and TradersHelpingTraders.com. And this is the Elliott Wave update for the S&P 500 for Thursday, June 24th, 2021. The S&P continues to trace out a sub-minute wave three. And that began right at this level. And I'm counting five waves up. And here is wave one, wave two, and then wave three. Still needs to be in progress. If this got into wave three, then we get a four. And now we're still needing a five of three to push ourselves up and to complete that sub minute wave three. So I am looking for a little bit more upside to 4269, 4270. The S&P has been very hesitant about breaking to new highs on this particular run, while the NASDAQ just kind of has been cruising straight up there without a problem. The S&P has a lot of resistance <clears throat> right around the previous high at uh, 42.58. So we really, that resistance was between 42.58 and 42.60. It kind of stayed there for most of the session, breaking above it all within the last hour of trading. <clears throat> Excuse me. So I'm going to continue to look for that to finish off. And that could happen overnight in Globex or it may you know, roll into uh, the start of our session tomorrow morning. Um, and then I'm looking for the beginning of a fourth wave. And that fourth wave should you know, appear that wherever this tops out, it's being rejected. And the market immediately just kind of begins to sell off, similar to what it did here. But this time it's going to be a little bit larger fourth wave. So once it does finish, we'll be able to run um, retracements, Fibonacci retracements from for all of wave three so that we can see where this fourth wave is going to be coming in. Right now, I'm going to be looking for right here. And that seems to be the uh, fourth wave or actually right here. So I'm not even looking for all that much because normally it's like if it gets up to here, the normal retracement would be um, there before to drop back into the fourth wave of one lesser degree, and that would be here. So we're not looking for much of a decline, but a decline nonetheless could be nine, 12, 11 points. So we also have support, we have resistance on the way up, support on the way back down, again, right there at that 53, which is within that four, and then the, the 50 day moving average just below it at 42.49 or 42.50. So it's a pretty tight zone that we're looking for this to come back to. I'm not really looking for it to go too deep because I still expect it to be a sub minute wave five, and that should take us up to our next levels 42, 86, 87, all the way up to uh, 4,300. And possibly we get, you know, it does a little springboard above it uh, because if it touches it and stops, get triggered to buy, well, that's where they would be, or just to cover a short, who knows. Um, but it could then add a couple of more points to it, maybe not. So I'm looking actually for it to get up to 4,300 in that area because that's been a target for such a long time. Doesn't have to, it could end here, it could end at 93, it could end at 99. I'm um, just saying that I think that the market anticipates 4,300 and so they're likely willing to buy it right up to there. Then, if that then completes we're looking for wave three to complete here, wave four and wave five up in here. That completes sub-minute wave five, minor wave five, intermediate wave five, and primary wave three. So you got, we got subs going on, but at least on, on the degree that we're labeling here, the minute, we have four layers that are completing advances. We have the minute, the minor, the intermediate, and the primary. So the correction that follows this, and I know I keep stating this this week, the correction that would follow this would be longer in term of time. And it also is going to kick off with a pretty uh, strong decline. Not a collapsing decline, but I think it'll definitely feel like it because this is all new highs. So I think if we really start to tumble off of these highs, we're gonna have to pick a point of value Right? The market is going to have to trade down the value and sellers are going to have to sell it down the value to really unload what they want to unload. And I'm not sure where that's going to come in right off the bat. 
So we'd have to look out further into where, where is the point of control on a monthly chart? Where's the point of control on a weekly chart? Where's the daily point of control? Those things will come into view. And once we get into that move, that's where we'll be looking and we'll, we'll take a peek and we'll see what's going on. But it's gonna be a larger ABC decline. And it should kick off with a fairly strong knock off a whole bunch of points type of a decline. Um, for right now though, declines should be shallow. I'm not looking for a lot. Wherever this kind of tops to this three and pulls back, I'm not looking for a lot. And then I'm looking for it to come up here and that after that level is reached, that's where I'm gonna be looking for a little bit stronger of a decline. Upside, again, first limited here, then we pull back and then here and then up further. Now, whether that, I don't think that's gonna take place tomorrow, but I, I don't know for certain. So we have to let the market tell us, uh, but I would suspect that it might take it through Monday, maybe Tuesday next week. And that's where I'm gonna leave it. The next update is on Sunday, 